It was during that period when I was 17 and a half that I saw my life flash in front of me like no other way. Like it really was as clear as the driven snow here today that if I don't change my life around, I was going to die. And, uh, and, and often we don't use, you know, I say 17 and a half. As we get older, we lose those halves. And uh, as we get into our 30s and 40s, we lose that second number too. We're just in our 30s and our 40s. But um, if I had I not been 17 and a half, my story would have been written differently. Uh, again, I always did well in school, and at the time, I was hanging out with the wrong crowd. And that's why, for the young people, understand that people you choose to hang around is of utmost importance. So, if you're hanging around five and six people that's misdirected, it won't be long before you become the next one. Um, I was always friends with Ramik and George. We went to University High School together, and uh, we had to take public transportation to get to the school. And at the end of the day, we would go to back home to our respective parts of, of North. And uh, so I was cool when I was with them. I did well, I made sure I got my grades, and we had fun. We had fun, we really had a lot of fun. And then when I left them, I went home to another group of guys who were all about holding down the street corner, you know. And as my mother always say, nothing good happens on the street corner. And so we're, we're standing on the street corner before, you know, Idle Minds is a devil's workshop. We stand in there and, and we find ourselves, you know, getting ourselves into trouble. And so, at, so that 17 and a half, I hung out with a group of guys and we committed an armed robbery. And um, it was then that, you know, when the judge talked about these different types of programs that dealt with many years in prison, and, and I wasn't a fan of none of those. Um, but, but fortunately, uh, because of my academics and because I had a part-time job, I had a two-year suspended sentence. And so this transpired between my junior year and my senior year of high school. So when I came back my senior year of high school, the only grade that was on my report card was an A. Nothing less. And I got all A's in my senior year. My senior year in my high school. And, uh, and, and so the way that you know things happen, it's you gotta, you know, sometimes in life, in order to understand success, you got to experience failures. So, you know, I understood that if I wanted to be successful, that this failure that I went through, I had to understand that and learn from it because you're not a fool if you fail, and 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 you're not a fool if you fail, but if you're you could kind of consider yourself to be a fool if you fell twice at the same thing, doing, you know, making those same mistakes over and over again. So had I gone back out there and did the same thing again, then I might want to call myself, you know, not that smart. But I made sure that that was the last time the, um, the judge said, you know, next time you, you come back here, make sure you bring your toothbrush. I said, don't worry about it. You won't see me again. And uh, ironically, I did go back to that same courthouse again. But it was uh, uh, 15 years later as an uh, expert witness in an emergency medicine case. So it was a different hat. Um, so the way that the pack began, because everybody often say, how did you guys make this pack? You've written books, New York Times bestseller, you've been on Oprah, the Essence Awards, the Today Show. You know, Oprah gave me her number, although she changed it once she gave it to me. Um, you know, I, I, I was definitely planning on stalking her. It was no doubt about that. Uh, I was going to commit that act. Uh, but, but nonetheless, uh, you know, it was our friendship, uh, and it was it was nothing methodical that took place. It was just one day, and uh, we were in class. We had the same classes together, and this was really during our junior year that we made this pact. We were uh, cutting class. It was second period, and we had a substitute teacher, and you know, so you know, we're like 15 years old, 16 years old, substitute teacher, second period. That's a great opportunity to cut class, right? It wasn't the smartest thing to do, but it, the, the end results turned out to be brilliant, I think. Uh, so we each raised our hands and made up different excuses to get out of class. I had to go to the bathroom. George had to go call his mother. Ramik had to go hand in a report for another class. So, you know, the teacher, the substitute teachers, some care, but most don't. They're like, whatever, just go, just go. You know, and take a friend with you, just go ahead and uh, So, you know, so we got out of class and we huddled together and we're like, all right, let's go to the gym and play basketball, because back then, it was a recess at second period, so what do boys do? They go to the gym. So we're making our way to the gym. We're walking down the hallway, and, and we didn't know that there was a, a, a substitute security guard. But this substitute security guard wanted to make a difference. He wanted to be somebody, which I'm glad he did, because he started to see us in the hallway and gave chase. And he told us to stop and yelled at us to stop where we were, because these three guys in the hallways hallway, uh, no pass in their hands, so they must be up to no good, right? So he's yelling at us to stop, and we have selective hearing. We don't hear him. He's like, stop, you three, stop right here. And we're like, uh, somebody's, nobody's talking to us. So 
All of a sudden, you can hear his keys rattling in his pocket as he's picking up pace. And so we start to pick up pace, and he's yelling for us to stop, and we're still not stopping because we don't hear him. And so he's running down, and we're running, and it's a full-out sprint. We're just running, running, trying to outrun the security guard. So our, our hope was if we just could make it to the corner, turn the corner, there was a door uh, that led to the uh, locker room, and we could go down into the locker room and come up on the other side of the locker room and assimilate with the class inside the gym. So we were, you know, I mean, this guy couldn't keep up with us. We were 15, you know, and he was old. He was like 25, you know, so he was shit. So, was, so we were full out sprinting full speed ahead, and then uh, right before we were about to turn the corner, somebody appeared in front of us, and it was the principal. Now, she should have been in her office doing some work. I don't know why. She was out in the hallways. I mean, it was second period. I know she was a parent or two she needed to be on the phone with at that time of day. So now we're sandwiched between the principal and the security guard, and just like a ray of light, just like that door that just opened. Because the library, I don't know about your schools, but the library in our school was always closed. Like, they always had the door locked for some reason. But today the door was open, it was like a ray of light just shining through, so we dodged into the library. And so happened, there was a seminar ongoing about careers in health and science being offered by Seton Hall University. So we all, you know, like, you know, assimilated and you know, with the class that was there and grabbed the seat. And, uh, you know, and the security guard and the principal looked in and said, well, they're probably better served here, they may learn something. So we sat down and, uh, <laughs> I remember asking the student, you know, what the program was about. He's like, oh, it's about, you know, helping, uh, helping minorities go to college and become doctors and dentists and scientists and everything. And I said, doctors, dentists, and scientists? Like, I don't know anything about those. I mean, I know my pediatrician. I know the Cosby Show and uh, Trapper John and Dave. For old heads, you know what Trapper John and Dave is. Um, so I said, but I don't know much about it being a doctor. And plus, I was working at McDonald's, and they already promoted me to crew chief, and they said that the assistant manager was next. So I already had my future. I was good. Calvin used to have this commercial with Calvin. He used to work at McDonald's, and I was like, "Okay, like Calvin, so I'm good." <laughs> so, I mean, uh, you know, my, my future was bright in, in the burger world. So, you know, so I was like, "I don't know about this college thing." Plus, nobody in my family ever went to college. You know, only a few of us graduated high school. So, you know, I felt like I, I was achieving something by graduating high school, uh, which you know is is not true. But at the same time, I thought so. Uh, so I put my head down to sleep. Ramit listened in because he wanted to be a teacher, and doctors and teachers, they do the same thing. They help people. They help people to, to become better. And, uh, and then George listened in because he wanted to So how did George get this idea of becoming a dentist where we were in a land of, of just so much crime and despair? Um, it happened one day when he had braces put on his teeth when he was 12, 13 years old. And the dental resident who worked on his mouth took five minutes of his time just teaching George just little things, the different structures, the enamel, the dentine, the locations, the name, the central incisors, the molars, the premolars, the canine. So when George came back for his repeat visits, he would say, okay, George, what's tooth number eight? And he's like, I told you last week, tooth, tooth number eight is what? And George liked the central incisor. So by having that sort of dialogue, not going out of his way, just doing his job, those five minutes of his time change three people's lives. Thank you.